if you don't do what we tell you, you'll just be pulverized. We don't care what you think or what you say. That's their attitude. What's unusual in this case is a brazen announcement that we are going to dominate the world by force. If necessary, we'll have the capacity to do it. The um, strategy report quite explicitly declared the, the most powerful state in to history maintain its, dominance uh, over the world. use of uh, military force. One dimension in which it ranks supreme. Obvious consequence: aggressiveness and militancy. The Bush administration, the Russians are going to respond, and the Chinese are going to respond, and others will respond. Say, We're going to destroy you. People don't say thanks. The official formulation is: our forces will be strong enough to dissuade potential adversaries from pursuing a military in hopes of surpassing or equaling the power of the United States. The uh, Russians have very uh, prominently uh, carried out their biggest military maneuvers in two days. With, uh, advanced offensive weapons and the most sophisticated and destructive missiles in the world. Aimed at the United States, they have adopted Bush's first strike doctrine. They've placed these forces on automated response. It's a huge threat to us. Our systems are vastly more sophisticated than theirs. strategy begins with a fundamental commitment to maintaining a unipolar world in which the United States has no peer competitor, a condition that is to be permanent so that no state or coalition could ever challenge the United States as global leader, protector, and enforcer. When we say we're going to attack anyone we want without credible evidence, we mean proof we're going to attack Iraq without credible evidence, and they don't have any, and they didn't have anything. carrying out a major assault against the general population. They know it, people know You've it. You've got to divert attention away from The only way that anyone's ever figured out is fear. Just pull a couple of lines out of uh, standard children's stories or uh, you know, ancient epics about how an evil monster is coming to destroy you. It was a Libyan hitman uh, uh, coming to assassinate the brave cowboy in the White House. Different cowboy that year uh, later it was uh, an air base in Grenada from which right. Russians were going to bomb us. There's a constant uh, effort that's been going on almost 25 years, and there were uh, domestic threats uh, like Hispanic narco traffickers and uh, black criminals. You'll recall George Bush, number one, uh, managed to gain office uh, in 1988 by waving the race card on that issue. The latest ones are Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda. The frightened population does tend to huddle under the umbrella of power. Right at this moment, government policy is purposely creating a fiscal crisis, they call it fiscal crisis of the state, in order to have a way of wiping out all the social programs of the past century and imposing a huge debt on future populations. Bush administration economists have uh, just released a study showing an anticipated $44 trillion deficit, which will be a fiscal train wreck. It was supposed to go into the budget last February, but they kept it out because they didn't want people to know about it when they're trying to push through another tax cut for the rich. They want a fiscal train wreck. If you have a fiscal train wreck, uh, you have to have what's called fiscal responsibility. Cut back spending, not cut back spending that goes into the pockets of rich people, but cut back on social spending, eliminate Medicare. Medicaid, Social Security, funding for the states so that they'll, they'll have huge deficits, eliminate public schools and so on. Just roll back any of the progressive legislation of the past century. It's got to be conscious in this a way that they could be doing this without understanding it. Huge deficits that are being funded so far by lending from abroad to Asia, Europe. How long that'll go on? That'll be the uh, 
effect would be of a crunch. Nobody knows. There could also be an energy crisis ahead. Nobody knows for sure, but yeah. sooner or later, oil production is going to peak, maybe soon, and start to decline and get more expensive. And this, what the effect will that be on a country like this? Wow, is wasteful and uh, energy use. probably spends as much as roughly the rest of the world combined on military force and way more technologically advanced and on to futuristic systems which are very frightening and hazardous. The Space Command announced its plans would be shifted control from control of space to ownership of space. They explain in detail setting up platforms in space for uh, highly destructive offensive weapons. It will undoubtedly include nuclear weapons. Globalization will lead to widening economic divide, stagnation, and increase in alienation, agitation, and violence. Well, that's why we need offensive military capacities from space. A growing number of have nots will be doing things we don't like, maybe developing weapons of mass destruction or something else, maybe terror. We have to better have uh, advanced force capacities to uh, take care of our purpose behind U.S. planners want to have the capacity to attack and destroy any part of the world instantly without warning and without reliance on forward bases. Well, that's uh, an extreme form of the goal of hegemony. Are there uh, ways of stopping and sure thing? We're not living in Turkey or the Equatorial Guinea or in free society. It's very important, I think, to get these people out of office. They hold a they have an extremely narrow hold on power. It's very fragile. With another mandate, they could do severe, maybe even irreversible damage. People who achieved things knew that you don't do it by one demonstration. You want changes, you have to work day after day. Some things will fail, do more of a build up from where you were last month. That's the way things Freedom isn't a gift from anyone. It was one centuries of struggle, but we enjoy it. We can use it. These are the deep abysses into which we ought to be peering. The good side of the story has been a constant improvement. The place is just a lot more civilized. It continues a historical it's course. It's been a long struggle to attain more rights, more democratic control, and it's continuing and probably accelerating. And it's a tendency running counter to the tendency towards destruction. And exactly which curve is going to move up faster will determine the fate of the species. That question is pretty much in the hands of people like you. First question, obviously, is whether what I'm saying is correct. Second question, uh, is it, uh, is it uh, radical? Well, almost everything I've said here is the opinion of a considerable majority of the American population. When I say I think we should have a sensible uh, health care system, uh, that's speaking for the majority. Of yes, the it's politically impossible, but that doesn't make it radically less. It's a problem about the nature of the way the system's function is functioning as a failed state. Population cannot enter the political arena. You can't even get information. The democratic system is formally there. You can push a button, but it's not functioning in a serious way. That's a radical left position. I think it's a very conservative position.